Thank you for joining us around the fire. For more information or to make a donation, please visit randomactsnetwork.com. Now, want to hear a scary story? Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young girl who lived deep in the dark, dark forest. Her name was Mary. Mary was the mirror image of her doting, adoring mother. They shared rich auburn hair, shiny blue eyes, and a laugh like wind chimes. Though they lived far from any village, they were content. Her mother filled her childhood with every trinket, every toy, every tiny bit of joy she could provide her beloved daughter. Every day, the little girl would wander through the wood, picking berries and herbs, Every night, her mother would make her daughter tea and read until she fell asleep. Though Mary loved her mother, sometimes she would grow lonely. And during those times, she learned to make friends in the forest. Fairies, unicorns, imaginary friends. She loved the woods, but she knew to fear it, too. Witches ride at night. Her mother would tell her, wrapping her arms of protection around Mary's shuddering shoulders. Monsters awake from their slumber and wolves devour all they find. At age 11, Mary and her mother had a fight in front of the same fire, reading the same stories, drinking the same tea as they did night after night after night. Mary told her mother she was bored, that she never let her go anywhere, that she was going crazy. And for a moment, her mother's eyes flashed with something Mary had never seen before. Something like fire. But as soon as it was there, it was gone, and Mary's mother sobbed. That night, Mary took the teacups into the kitchen, and in that kind of silent, petty revenge teenagers excel in, she dumped the rest of her tea out instead of finishing it. And that's the night she heard the monster. Mary had never woken up in the middle of the night before, but here she was, awake, with the shining moon high overhead. She wondered at the vastness of the night sky, her breath fogging the glass in her window. And then she heard it. It came from directly below Mary's bedroom. It was the loudest, most heart-wrenching, terrible scream she had ever heard. The walls shook with it. Birds fled the trees, flying across the moon. Whatever it was, it screamed, and it screamed, and it screamed. Mary buried her face into her pillow, plugging her ears with all her might. But the screaming continued to haunt her, and she lied awake until she saw the sun. Mother, did you hear the wailing last night? The plate her mother was drying had fallen to the floor. My dearest, you must have had a nightmare. No, I was awake. I kept hearing the most horrible sounds. Mary's mother raced to her beloved daughter and wrapped her in her arms. Oh, my darling, you heard one of the monsters of the forest. Like I've told you, the night is when they rule this earthly plain. But in the morning, the monsters are gone. That night... Mary's mother watched as she drank every drop of her tea. That convinced her. Mary didn't know why her mother was drugging her asleep, but she was determined to find out. So Mary got clever. It took some time, but she learned how to sneak mouthfuls of tea back into the cup, pour it into plants behind her mother's back. And in that time, she heard more and more every night. Thumps. Moans. Weeping, unearthly gurgling cries, all at night, all from below her floorboards. Weeks later, Mary convinced her mother to let her take her tea to her room so she could read in bed. Instead, she dumped the tea out of the window. With all her wits about her, she was determined to find the truth. Late that night, she waited for the first of the moans. When it came, she stole from her bed, peeled back her rug, and pressed her ear to the floorboards. And she knocked. It heard her. Uh, hello? 
the sounds were moving. Keeping her ear to the floor, she followed the thumps across the floorboards, up the wall, out her door and down the hall, and there they stopped. Mary's mother was a weaver, and her masterpiece tapestry hung in the hallway. It told the story of a blue-eyed princess falling in love with a prince with corn-blonde hair and eyes green as emeralds. It came from right behind the tapestry. But how? Mary's fingers found the edges of the fairy tale tapestry and peeled them back. A door. Mary reached for the handle, took a deep breath, and pulled. Darkness. She grabbed an oil lamp, lit it, and made her way down the narrow secret passageway. Colder and colder with each dirty stone step, the light from the oil lamp reached into the shadows, embracing and exposing the space within. It was a room the exact size of Mary's, but inverse. Instead of a goose feather bed, there was a filthy pile of straw. The room's only decoration were two framed pictures, lit by the light of the moon creeping in from a single barred grate, serving as its only window. Mary crept to the pictures, raising her lamp to the first. It was her mother, younger, happier, with a handsome, gorgeous man, a man with hair blonde as corn, eyes green as emeralds. The second picture was her mother as well, looking worn, tired, a forced smile but fury in her eyes, flanked by two little girls, young enough not to remember that day, one the spitting image of her mother, the other with hair the color of corn and eyes green as emeralds. Suddenly, Mary knew she was not alone. As she slowly turned her head, she saw her. It was like looking into a cursed, inverted mirror. The bloody, mangled girl stumbled her way to Mary. Bruised arms reached out for her as if to grasp her. If they could, she didn't have any hands. Mary's hands shook, but her heart swelled, and she placed her hands on the bloody, eyeless face of her sister. And Mary realized she had been mistaken. The monster had been living upstairs the whole time. Mary grasped her sister tight as low, gurgling sobs escaped her tongueless mouth. Mary whispered into her undamaged ears, I'll get you out of here, I promise! And for a moment, it seemed possible, beautifully possible. But then they heard wind chimes. The monster had found them. Mary, sweetest, go back upstairs. We know there was a struggle. No, not without my sister. And there was a knife. You were never meant to know. And Mary failed to save her sister. But oil lamps are fickle things. And straw is so flammable. And teenage girls are strong creatures, especially when they have watched a sister die. And doors are so easily locked. <laughs> Mary fled the burning house, determined to find peace for her sister. She found answers in occult teachings and blood knowledge. She learned that sometimes terrible things anchor us. Terrible things like dying in your dungeon with the one who locked you there. So she made a plan to set her sister free. A blood ritual, a conjuring spell to bring Sarah back. Her sister deserved revenge against the town who knew she suffered and did nothing to stop it. Mary Bogan created the Boogie Woman. And now, Sarah is free. Sarah is free. Sarah is free. Mary's Story Written by Savannah Ray and Brian Renaud Told by Dana Maisel Featuring Serafina Vecchio and Shayna Somerville 